It's been a while. Today, we're going to dive deep into Hippocratic medicine and humorism and how this gives rise to the four temperaments. So the four humors, and you might have heard of them before, are the sanguine, the choleric, the melancholic, and the phlegmatic. And this system of thinking about uh, the body and health dates back to ancient Greece with this guy named Hippocrates, who lived around five centuries before Christ was born. And he was pretty ahead of the curve because he urged people to seek a natural explanation for disease via observation, uh, as opposed to a supernatural one, right? Because before, uh, generally speaking, before this guy, uh, a lot of um, supernatural or mystical arguments were uh, used to explain disease. Uh, and this guy was sort of like, no, uh, even diseases and even mental illnesses are um, caused by physical things as opposed to supernatural things. And so he was kind of ahead of the curve in this sense. Uh, and this style of medicine, the Hippocratic medicine, was also ahead of its time because it promoted a sense of balance uh, since it was believed that a balance of these four humors uh, led to good health. <clears throat> so I'm going to read to you an excerpt from uh, On the Nature of Man, which is one of the texts from the Hippocratic Corpus, which is uh, assumed to be written by Hippocrates. So... This is how it goes. Hippocrates writes, The human body contains blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. These are the things that make up its constitution and cause its pains and health. Health is primarily that state in which these constituent substances are in the correct proportion to, to each other, both in strength and quantity, and are well mixed. Pain occurs when one of the substances present, one of the humors, presents either a deficiency or an excess, or is separated in the body and not mixed well with the others. The body depends heavily on the four humors because their balanced combination helps to keep people in good health. Having the right amount of humor is essential for health. So even though these uh, ancient dudes didn't have a fancy word for it, they were basically describing the principle of homeostasis, which we now know is essential to like all biological systems, uh, including uh, the health of human beings, right? So uh, it was believed that all four of these humors circulated in your body, uh, in your veins and arteries, and this makes sense uh, if you are putting yourself in the shoes of a, uh, a physician from 2,000 years ago. Because if you take someone's blood sample and you let it sit, uh, the blood will separate into four different layers. A dark clot will form at the bottom, and this is like the black bile. Uh, the clot above uh, will just be, sorry, above the clot is a layer of red blood cells, right? Just the blood. Uh, and this is the that they just called the blood. <laughs> and above this is a whitish layer of white blood cells. This is what they called the phlegm. And then the top layer is clear yellow serum, which is the yellow bile. Uh, so it wasn't just a totally made-up theory. They had uh, reason to believe, uh, to, to believe in it. And uh, you'll see that there's additional evidence uh, for it as well, uh, and I'll mention that in a minute. Um, but another reason uh, that this Hippocratic system was sort of ahead of the ahead of the curve, was that many of the cures uh, and illnesses, or m the cures for many of the illnesses recommended by doctors, um, were holistic, and usually dietary changes or exercise regimes were recommended for treatment, and, and surgery and drugs were being pre prescribed far less often. Uh, Hippoc Hippocrates wrote that walking is man's best medicine. Right, this is kind of an example of a holistic treatment. This stands in contrast to today in which uh, the pill seems to be the solution to every problem, right? Um, Big Pharma just wants you to take pills and that'll solve all your medical issues. <clears throat> so uh, in many ways, the humoral theory, even though we, it's very dated and we know that it's like not very factually accurate, uh, it was a system that worked for a long time and it was very holistic. <clears throat> and I often find that in common understanding, people believe that like in the olden days, uh, these old scientists and guys were stupid because they believed in theories like the four humors. But in reality, this is simply not the case, right? Um, before they had the germ theory of disease and uh, microscopes or the cell theory, uh, and before major anatomical dissections, humorism, or the, the concept of the four humors, was actually a good system, and it worked well for over a thousand years. Uh, doctors practicing humeric medicine in medieval Europe, for example, had to study humeric medicine for seven years before they could practice alone. This is one year longer than family doctors would have to practice today, so it was pretty rigorous. <clears throat> so the four humors were 
associated with a different organ, right? So black bile was produced in the spleen, yellow bile was thought to be produced in the gallbladder, blood in the liver, and phlegm was produced in the lungs and the brain. <clears throat> and you can see here in the background that each of the uh, different humors is associated with different properties, right? So blood and phlegm are wet, whereas yellow bile and black bile are dry, and then blood and yellow bile are hot, and uh, phlegm and black bile are cold. <clears throat> and since health is a balance of these four humors, disease is an excess or deficiency of one or more. So if you have a deficiency, you can add it via food, or you can remove a uh, humor if you have an excess via like surgery or bloodletting or purging. Um, so, <clears throat> for example, uh, I read somewhere that if uh, a dude was feeling a bit like he had a cold, um, that's an example of having too much phlegm, right? Uh, and so a doctor might prescribe for that person to go and eat some hot chicken or hot rooster because the white meat off of a, a bird like that is uh, hot and dry, which is kind of the opposite of cold uh, and wet, which is the phlegm, right? Kind of balancing it out. <clears throat> so interesting cure there. So next time you're sick, you can try eating hot chicken. <laughs> <clears throat> so six centuries after uh, Hippocrates lived, there's this uh, dude named Galen, and he... And before Galen, the humor, humoral theory was sort of falling out of uh, vogue, and Galen revived it, and he got pretty famous for his uh, revival of Humeric medicine, uh, or Hippocratic medicine. And after the revival of Galen, the uh, humorism kind of was cemented into the Western theory and practice of medicine uh, for the next, I don't know, thousand or so years until, or even longer actually, until the germ theory and the cell theory came around. So... Now I want to talk more about how these four humors can give rise to the four temperaments. So, again, this this theory is very materialistic, right? So it posits that how material is arranged in the body gives rise not only to disease, but also to different temperaments. And so the temperament is not an immaterial thing, like the mind or consciousness or the will, but rather the temperament is like based in the balance of your humors. And so it's a very materialistic uh, viewpoint. So uh, the association is that, uh, let's change the slide here so you can see, that's oh, tiny, there we go. So the association is that black bile is melancholic, yellow bile, or having more being characterized by more yellow bile, is choleric, uh, blood is sanguine, and phlegm is phlegmatic. Uh, so before we dive into each one of those and the traits that they each have, I want to talk about sort of how encompassing this viewpoint was. So not only are these uh, four different humors connected to different uh, uh, temperaments as well as diseases, but it was also connected to the primordial elements, right? Earth, water, air, and fire. Earth being melancholic, water being phlegmatic, air being sanguine, and fire being choleric. Um, the four humors were also connected to the seasons, phlegmatic being winter, Sanguine is spring, melancholic is autumn, and choleric is summer. Also, these four humors were connected to the life stages. So sanguine or blood was infancy, uh, an excess, not an excess, but of a greater amount of yellow bile, or the choleric type, is associated with youth. Black bile, or the melancholic, is associated with adulthood, and phlegm, or phlegmatic, is associated with old age. Uh, one of the first videos I did on my channel, uh, is the book review of King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, which is the four archetypes of the mature masculine. Um, and the, I noticed that these four humors uh, sort of vaguely map onto these uh, four different archetypes as well, with uh, the lover being sanguine, the magician being melancholic, the warrior being choleric, and the king being phlegmatic. <clears throat> and so when we talk about different people having a different temperament or a different a greater amount of one of the four humors. Uh, oftentimes they have one dominant or one major and then one minor, one, one recessive type that co constitutes their temperament. Uh, and then the other two are sort of being less present in the background, right? <clears throat> so now I kind of want to go through them. Uh, I have a second slide that's kind of similar to this one, so I'll just switch to it. Whoa. Okay. So, yeah, I'll go through the sanguine first. So 
for the, the person who's characterized by uh, the, the blood or being sanguine, uh, the emotions are quick to come and go. Uh, sanguine people are very straightforward and authentic. They're imaginative and live a f uh, they're full of life. Um, they're very friendly and social. People love being around them. Uh, they're sort of social butterflies, uh, very spontaneous. Um, and they experience life through the senses. And this is why the sanguine kind of maps onto the, um, the lover from the King Warrior Magician Lover. Uh, they experience life through the senses, and they appreciate the simple things. Uh, the negatives of this personality type is that they often appear superficial, uh, and they find co contemplation and self-reflection difficult. And they may be controlled by their senses, so that self-control is difficult, because that's the way they experience the world right through their senses. And they may have difficulty staying focused on achieving long-term goals, because they're kind of spontaneous and uh, uh, lighthearted. <clears throat> and they might also, for the same reason, experience emotional instability. So the virtues to, to focus on as a sanguine person is temperance, diligence, and then thoughtfulness or introspection. Now let's move on to the phlegmatic. So the phlegmatic person, uh, is in contrast to the sanguine, they react quite slowly. They're very tranquil people. Um, they are devoid of strong passions or opinions, it's sort of a sober type. They're also very meticulous and consistent, consistent, orderly, um, but at the same time, uh, the other side of the token is that they're unambitious and sometimes procrastinate. Um, because they react slowly and they're tranquil, they're also emotionally balanced, uh, and they have common sense and are very practical. Uh, phlegmatic people can also be very sacrificial, uh, but another con is that they, are, they lack enthusiasm and they lack the spontaneity of the, of the sanguine person. Uh, they often get along well with others and fly under the radar because they're kind of just like chill. Um, but they fall victim to dullness, apathy, or sloth. So the virtues to work on for the phlegmatic person would be zeal and also a strengthening of the convictions. So moving on to the choleric. The choleric person is characterized by passion, dominance, and anger. So they're full of energy. Um, so they appreciate a set of high and lofty ideals and orient themselves towards the set of ideals. Um, they're great problem solvers, they make decisions quickly, decisively, they're hard workers, and they're great leaders in the workplace. So uh, overall, this, this notion of being energetic and very focused, um, this is what characterizes the choleric person. So they tend also to be very practical rather than theoretical, but the negative side of the choleric person is that they're impatient, they're stubborn, and they're uh, proud, and often domineering as well. Um, and they might think other people are stupid because they can't react as fast as they can. Uh, and they, these, these cleric people might fall into deceit and hypocrisy and a lack of compassion. So the virtues to focus on for the cleric person would be fortitude, uh, humility, uh, which is the big one, uh, and then meekness, so that this is the virtue that combats anger, uh, as well as charity or compassion. So I'll go on to the final one, the melancholic. So the melancholic person is like we, uh, this, this word is more sort of common in our, in our uh, language, right? If someone is melancholic, they're like sad, right? And so the melancholic person is characterized by their disposition towards sorrow and pessimism. Uh, like the phlegmatic, they're also slow to react. Uh, they're also very serious. They tend to be reserved and introverted. They do not like crowds. The melancholic person is contemplative, introspective, and analytical, sort of detached. Uh, and they're not particularly ener energetic or goal-oriented, um, and they can also be self-centered. And this self-centeredness of the melancholic person is what leads to their sorrow. Uh, the virtues to work on for the melancholic are joy, charity, and humility. And the humility is what removes the self-centeredness and also the, uh, their, their uh, sorrow. And it's safe to say it's the melancholic person out of the four types that's most predisposed towards depression. And uh, the sanguine person is least disposed towards depression. <laughs> I'll just switch here. I got one more picture. Here you can see the um, the four humors and their temperaments mapped onto the uh, MTBI uh, Myers Briggs types. Um, so I just wanted to uh, finish this video by kind of asking, like, why would we want to study something like personality? Um, so or the first thing would be to uh, better know ourselves and our strength and our strengths and weaknesses, right? Uh, in Lamentations 3.40, it says, Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. 
So uh, knowing what sort of things we're predisposed towards via our temperament can help us know what vices we have inclinations towards and like what to look out for, as well as what I noted above, the virtues to work on. Um, knowing people's temperaments, and not only our own, but other people's as well, can help us work well with others. So in sort of improving group dynamics and understanding the desires and fears of, that motivate other people, um, so it can help us interact with others. And the third reason it's important to study um, personality types is it helps us with our vocation and our, and our calling in regards to our spiritual gifts. And I wanted to close with this verse from Romans 12, 3-8. Uh, it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one another, one of another. Having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, or he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So this sort of just goes to show that um, different people have different temperaments or different gifts, and if we are aware of those different temperaments, and we can sort of help us to orient ourselves in regards to our uh, vocation. So yeah, that was the four humors and uh, how they relate to the four temperaments. I uh, hope you found that interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, have a good one. See ya.